Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Short Play, a series of quick tours of games I like on a variety of platforms, new and old. Today we're looking at The Incredible Machine, which was a 1993 release uh, from Dynamics, which was a brand of Sierra. It was developed by Kevin Ryan and produced by Jeff Tunnell. The version we're looking at today is actually the even more incredible machine, which was a re-release of the first game in the series, uh, featuring more parts to use in your machines and uh, about twice the number of levels. So it was basically an enhanced re-release. That is, if you've got access to the even more incredible machine, which you can too today, thanks to GOG.com, um, yeah, there's no real reason to play the original one. The rights for the series have actually been passed around all over the place over the years, and they currently sit in the hands of, uh, of Disney through a strange combination of circumstances, but Disney haven't done a whole lot with it. Um, Jeff Tunnell, meanwhile, uh, he decided that he wanted to return to the concept, but obviously not holding on to the rights anymore. He couldn't just make a new incredible machine game. So instead, he developed a successor called Contraption Maker, which released via Steam Early Access in 2014. But today we're going right back to the beginning of the series, or its enhanced re-release anyway. Let's go play the even more incredible machine. Okay, here we are with the incredible machine, or the even more incredible machine I should be uh, taking care to note. So, if you've never come across this game before, this is basically um, Ruby Goldberg, Heath Robinson, the game. In which you create a variety of different machines to accomplish various purposes. Um, involving all manner of weird and wonderful parts. So let's let's just jump in and have a look. Uh, we have our copy protection first of all, um, which this is the GOG.com version I'm playing here. So they've made it so you can just click any old thing and it doesn't matter. Whereas previously you'd have to look up some symbols in the manual. All right, going from the very beginning, puzzle one tutorial. Put the ball in the hoop. So there's a lot of tutorial puzzles, as you can see. Um, but these give you a really good insight into how all the different parts work, so it's worth playing through all of them. None of them are patronising, um, or insultingly difficult. Difficult? Insultingly easy, I should say. Um, yeah, they just all give you, like, a, a quick way of figuring out how all these parts work, and how to put machines together. So, our objective in this one is to get the basketball in the hoop, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to make... All make it roll off this conveyor belt and the way we do that is with a mouse in a cage with a belt connected to the conveyor belt which will start it moving however in order to get that mouse moving we need to hit it something so we need to hit it with this bowling ball so we need this conveyor belt to move with this mouse and this belt and we also need this conveyor belt to move so we have this mouse and this belt and so the process will be, this bowling ball will fall on this cage and start the mouse running, which will activate this conveyor belt, which will move this ball along, and so on and so on and so on. And we've got a few of these parts here as well that will just help guide the ball into where we want it to end up. So let's just pop these in here. And you can resize a lot of these parts using sort of windows style handles down the side this was this was a dos game but it used a lot of windows style conventions and then you click this button up here to start the machine and there we go and you get a password um for each level you complete so you can come back to where you are it does save your progress um and this version from gg.com does come with a whole bunch of levels unlocked right from the beginning so um you don't need to worry too much about writing down your passwords unless you're going to be reinstalling somewhere else and you want to pick up where you left off. Okay, puzzle two, tutorial, mirror, mirror images. Put both bowling balls into the metal baskets. To solve this puzzle, you just place and flip the mouse cage and then hook up the pulley belt to the conveyor belt. Okay, so this one is teaching you about putting objects down and being able to change their orientation. So if we just put them down as is, this is what will happen. The one on the right goes the wrong way. So what we need to do is click on this one here and press this button here to turn it around the other way. And that will make it go the correct way. And we continue. So tutorial bellows and balloons. You must pop all of the balloons 
So a good thing to do when you're first starting is just to see what happens. So just start the machine. And we can see that this one pops already because the baseball falls on the bellows which blows the balloon towards the scissors so we don't need to do anything else with that one over here the ball drops on the mouse and starts the gear turning but the balloon doesn't get close enough to the gear to pop so what we need to do is we need to put in another set of bellows turn it round and drop another ball on top and then over here we need to recreate the scissor arrangement that we've got over there. And in theory, that should take care of it. There we go. All done. So like I say, these tutorial levels are all really simple. Um, I used to love this music when I was a kid. Um, yeah, they will, they will give you like a bit of practice in using all the different parts and as you progress then progress through the game you have more different things that you can do your goal is to make the bowling ball fall off the bottom of the screen all right so let's see what happens if we just do this all right so that falls down there so what we want to do is take one of these flip it round put that there Take this one, flip it round, put it there, and you know what to do with the last one. Phew. Pretty straightforward, as you can see. All right, next up, use the boxing gloves to punch the baseball up to the metal pipes. So this is introducing the boxing glove part. So again, start the machine just to see what it does to begin with. That punches that bowling ball along there. Uh, so what we then need to do is add one of those there. And pop another boxing glove there. So they can punch through walls, as you saw. And then basically repeat that process down here and add a final boxing glove just there Phew. beautifully done all right make malt the mouse run in this cage by hitting the cage with the basketball so this one You need to figure out where that basketball is going to land each time. So, probably there. Boing. And it gets higher each time. So you need to figure out where it's going to land next. Probably about there. Okay. And then probably a last one about there. There we go. First time. And you'll notice down at the bottom of the screen, we are getting points for this. And you get points. There's a flat bonus for the level, uh, plus a bonus that is based on how quickly you solve it. I mean, ultimately, the score in this is completely irrelevant because you can just save your progress and start again. Um, but it is something you can, you can sort of challenge yourself to get as far as you can from the beginning and see what happens. All right, I didn't check what we were supposed to do on this one. Make the jack-in-the-box break the fishbowl of Bob the fish. Okay. So this is what happens from the beginning. Okay, so this mouse winds up this jack-in-the-box here, which will send this up here, which will hit that mouse. So we need to wire that one up to this one. And that will send this bouncing down here. So we need one more mouse and one more jack-in-the-box. And that should take care of it. Phew. Done. See? Easy, but you still have to kind of think about it. 
Tilting at windmills. All you need to do is pop the balloon. Note that you must flip the windmill to select which direction it turns. Okay, so... So absolutely nothing happens with this one to begin with. Uh, so, we need to pop a windmill there. And that will get blown by the uh, bellows. And you can attach a belt to a windmill just like you can with the mouse. But you see that's going the wrong way at the minute. So that's why it says we need to flip the windmill. Turn it around. And it will go the other way. Then that will fall down there. Onto another set of bellows. And there. And then finally. That there. As long as that's close enough to blow that windmill. Let's find out. Oh, no. So the ball bounces a bit more down this direction. So move that over there. It's all about trial and error and experimenting and refining and iterating. It's very sort of scientific in a lot of ways. Which is very much in keeping with a lot of stuff that kind of Sierra and Dynamics were doing at the time. They did a lot of educational titles um, that involved this sort of thing. Your goal is to lower all three buckets. To do this, you must cut both ropes with the scissors. Okay, so first thing we do is we pop a trampoline underneath the baseball. That will cause it to bounce up and cut those scissors there. And then the second one is just a simple case. I'll pop in the scissors there and sticking the ball above them. Now, we have an issue. So this lands on the trampoline and thus it doesn't count as being lowered because it doesn't land on the platform. So what we can then do is we put the trampoline up there and then it works perfectly. All right, you must shoot all three guns. Right, so this one uses ropes and pulleys. So at the moment, this is what happens. The bucket falls and pulls the trigger via the pulley there. So we need to find some other ways to fire this gun and this gun. Uh, so what happens after that? All right, this one we can attach to this seesaw it doesn't quite pull it hard enough does it oh it does yeah okay so last thing we need to do then is um, very good question oh another bucket that's all we need to do there's buckets are not every object is affected by gravity but buckets are one of the ones that are so Let's take that through there and into there. There we go. Lovely. The pulleys and ropes in this are probably the most sort of finickety aspect of it because they don't always seem to work quite how you might expect them to. Um, but yeah, you, you soon get a feel for how they work. Your goal is to turn on all the fans. You must flip the light switch to provide power to the electric plug. The initial state of all plugs is off. Okay, so this fan is plugged in, we can see there, but this this is off because it's told us that it's off. So uh, what we need to do is plug this fan in here and you have to put it close enough for the plug to appear. Uh, pop that there so it will blow the balloon up and flip that switch. Uh, but in order to flip this switch, we need to come from underneath. So we need to put a trampoline there. And then all we need to do over here is just plug this fan in and that should take care of all of it. There we go. Quick and easy. All right, generators and motors. Make the tennis ball fall down into the pipe hole. Generators will take turning motion and provide electricity. The electric motor must be plugged in to run. Okay, so we start with a fan. So that's obviously going to go with a windmill. Which we can hook up to this generator. Needs to be a bit closer, don't it? There we go, and that will provide power to this socket here. So we can use an electric motor, plug that in there, hook that up to that, uh, and then 
another generator down here attached to the mouse with a fan plugged into it that will blow the tennis ball into the hole okay this is going the wrong way at the moment so we need to flip the motor around and that should sort it out there we go beautifully done I am smart it gets a lot harder than this trust me uh, I'm just trying to make myself look intelligent by uh, uh, blitzing these levels anyway your goal is to make all the gears on the screen turn shining light on the solar panel will make the electric plug active okay so these are solar panels um, so if you turn the light on like with this one pull the switch light turns on that would effectively turn this on so we need to attach something to that in this case a motor to drive this um, and then that will do what we need a fan for that windmill obviously and then that needs to attach to those gears and then we need some way of yeah so we put a torch there and that should be it i think that's pointing the wrong way there we go all done so a lot of your sort of iteration process will be making things of making sure things are facing the right direction that kind of thing your goal is to fire all of the cannons you will need to flip one of the magnifying glasses so the light is focused correctly so this is all about using light um, and magnifying glasses to create heat so again this one will need to flip round pop a torch down there and then one final one over here and we won't need any extra balls because you'll see the cannons fire them there we go done that's 14 puzzles down all tutorial puzzles admittedly but whatever all right all you need to do is fire the cannon well that should be easy shouldn't it so we've got a light that turns on and blows up that dynamite which launches that bucket into the air which we can tie to this light switch which we can put some more dynamite that's there so the fuse can be lit by the magnifying glass have a torch down here and a magnifying glass flips around so you can see how this is gradually getting more complicated but it's doing so at, at a really nice pace it's not overwhelming you with too many possibilities at once it's just giving you a chance to sort of explore things and then examine how those new parts interact with one another you must light the candle okay so what happens first that rocket goes off and sends that off like that so we're going to need to do a torch down here and light that rocket and then what that burst the balloon hmm that's not what we want we want to light the candle with this magnifying glass instead what we want to do is it's a good question actually what do we want to do let me get rid of that i think we might actually want the the light instead yeah I remember this this being one of the points where it started to get a little bit more challenging so that goes down there knocks that up 
can we tie that to this actually maybe not oops maybe not directly let's put a pulley in there don't think that's going to work no because this end's just too slack so what about the other way around there we go so, you see in that one, you have some red herrings to deal with. There's probably some alternative solutions you could have done in that one, uh, but there are some red herrings along the way as well that you need to deal with. So, you won't necessarily need all of the parts that are provided to you. Your goal is to push both plungers down and set off the dynamite. Make sure you explode all dynamite that is on the playfield. Right, so at the moment, this happens. That. Okay, so we need to drop this down onto a seesaw. Pop in a pulley. Make sure that works. There we go, so that fires the gun and then sets off a chain reaction of dynamite. So we just need to pop the rest of the dynamite down. And pop that there and that of course will blow this bowling ball in that direction and make it push the other plunger there we go beautifully done i think you'll agree 18 sending mort the mouse home get mort the mouse safety to the mouse hole in the bottom right corner of the screen a broken frisk bowl will attract pokey the cat right so this is what happens in this one so far absolutely nothing so we need to bouncy bouncy this up here because that will break the fishbowl and send the cat coming over there which will activate that mouse there so we pop a conveyor belt underneath mort there which will send him flying in that direction and then running away from Pokey the cat. We put another cat there and that will make him run into his mouse hole. I remember when this first came out, I was absolutely delighted that a part for your machine was just a cat. <laughs> there we go. All right, monkey business. Your goal is to make both monkeys ride their bicycles. So the way you do this, you see they've got a blind in front of um, the banana. So you need to pull the rope uh, so that... Well, I'll show you. There you go. So that they can see their banana. Right. So how do we go about doing that? Uh, let's start with a light here. And let's tie... this via a pulley to that that doesn't work so what about down there there we go so that turns that light on which we can put a rocket there which will fly up and activate that seesaw and then again we need a pulley There we go. All done. Up to puzzle number 20, bridging the gap. The basketball must cross all the gaps. To solve this puzzle, you must connect two of the teeter totters, or seesaws as we call them over here, with a rope passing through your pulleys. Actually, fun fact, this is the this game was the first time that I ever heard the term teeter totter um, to mean seesaw. So yeah, this game taught me a bit of American slang. Or, or just American language i guess okay so to solve this puzzle you must connect two of the teeter tosses with a grape passing through the pulleys you must also stretch and incline smaller to fill in one of the gaps let's have a look so um well that's obviously where the incline goes so I stick that there and we'll need that tied through here to pull that down that should do it there we go no maybe not 
Hmm. Try again? Doesn't quite get up far enough, does it? What happens if we go the other way? Right, that then doesn't pull. There we go. That's it. So the last seesaw teeter totter uh, is completely irrelevant on that one. Tutorial number 21 Climbing a hill. Make the ball climb the hill and knock Pokey the cat off the cliff. Bless. To solve this puzzle, you need to place some mouse cages so the ball rolls over them. So this should be pretty straightforward, shouldn't it? Again, it's one about sort of squeezing things into tight gaps. You see that conveyor belt gives it in just enough force to push it up the hill. Poor old Pokey. Alright, pop any three of the four balloons. Gears that are turning will pop any balloons that come into contact with them. Right. So, what happens when we start? Right, so we can use this monkey to turn those gears there. And that takes care of one of them. This one here is pulling. Uh, so... We should be able to open up that one. And again, that starts that one off. So let's put another gear in there. Right, we can then attach that gear to that conveyor belt. And that mouse to that gear. And that should do it, I think. Hmm. Maybe that way around. No, it's still going the wrong way. Sorry, I'm just bashing my microphone there. Hmm. Maybe we attach the monkey to the conveyor belt. What does that do? Right, that works. So we can then... Um, do what? Oops, wrong button. Can we tie these together by long distance? No, that's too far. That one's already attached to something. Um, I haven't got anything else to attach stuff to. What about if we attach that to that? And then that to that? No, it's too far away. Curses! Hold on, that one's not working now. Need to. F oh, what have I done? <laughs> if you make a real mess, then you can just restart the level. Right, let's look again. So that starts that one off, which we can then. This seems logical. That seems logical. Can we attach that to... Will that do anything? Yes, it will. That will start the mouse off. Okay, so... Except that doesn't help us, does it? Um... But yeah, that just makes the basketball go the wrong way. Which is not what we want. Hmm. Right, we do want to attach that to that, though. Because that starts that one off. Ah, and then we can 
attach that to that with a belt instead of putting a gear in the way. And if we put another gear here, that should hopefully reverse the direction of that, which will then allow us to do that. I think that's it. There we go. So you're getting more complex now, isn't it? All right, let's just do a couple more. How many tutorials are there? Oh, we're actually on to puzzles now. It's no, no longer a tutorial territory. Let's try and get to puzzle 25. Your goal is to make the three baseballs, but none of the tennis balls go into the container on the right. Okay. Um, so in order to do that, we need to do some fancy shooting. This is another one with a, a bit of experimentation required. Right, so that gets one baseball in there. I uh, don't think that will set that one off, will it? Oh, it will. Okay, so that's two. And this one we probably need a pulley for. There we go. A lot easier than it looks, that one. All right, and number 24. Don't let any of the balloons pop. Okay, so obviously a lot of tying things up needed here. There we go. Easy. That one actually is pretty easy. Pop the two rightmost balloons. Okay. Well, one of those is pretty easy because we just need to set the mouse off. As for the others, um, what about if we tie them together via a pulley? And I keep pressing the right mouse button and that keeps taking us back here. What about if we put a pulley there? Can we turn that around? Or maybe there. No, they just get pulled out that side then. What was I thinking? Um, <clears throat> Don't think we want to tie those together. So that one just bursts, and that's fine. Um, we want to pull this one over onto this side though. This is not the way to do that. I've done it again. Right, get rid of that. We need to like pull or knock this one over this way somehow. Um, can we just tie them together? Will that work? Nope. <laughs> Got loads of pulleys. Oh, nearly. Hmm. Nope, that's no good. Why don't we put them closer together? Oh, very close. Oh, 
Not close enough. Just trying to see if we can put these balloons in the way at the minute. All right, through there and in there. All right then. Nope. You go down a little bit. Just bounce off that one and just float up. Just float up a little bit. Come on. Probably don't need two pulleys here. What happens if we just use one? Still not quite close enough. What about here? Hmm. It goes like right past it. Need to sort of bounce off that one if at all possible, but no, it just. Who? Oh, done it. <laughs> That's what I like about this game. She can sort of really sort of bodge a solution together like that. It's ridiculous. Anyway. Now there's 25 puzzles of the even more incredible machine. There's some ridiculous number in this game as a whole. So, yeah, well worth exploring. It's a great game. And there's some great successes to this as well. Um, all of which you can get on GOG.com. Except for, I think there's one that is sort of caught up in Wright's Hell. Um, it's Sid and Owl's Incredible Tunes, I think. Not sure what the situation is with that one. Um... At least I don't remember seeing that on GOT.com. Maybe they sorted it out. I haven't looked for a little while. I've, I've had these in my library for quite some time. But anyway, that is the even more incredible machine for MS-DOS PC. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. Be sure to check out moegamer.net for new articles on Japanese and Japanese-inspired video games, new and old, every weekday. Every month, Moegamer features an in-depth exploration of an individual game or series as its cover game, so be sure to check the archives to see if your favourite has had a deep dive yet. If you'd like to support the site directly, please consider becoming a patron or buying me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.